Well, praise the Lord, saints. This is your pastor again, and I'm glad to greet you again on this Thursday evening as we continue again on this very exciting study uh, that is dealing with relational health, relational wholeness, and rel relational wellness. Again, uh, in Jesus' name, I've decided tonight uh, to wear a, a T-shirt. You've seen it before. You can't see the whole thing. Let me tilt my camera. I love the church, the Apostolic Faith Church. I love the church. And I wore this intentionally as we talk about relationships because a large part of our teaching that, again, uh, took up on Wednesday uh, and then on Thursday today has to do with uh, God's healing power or remedy for our brokenness, our disconnection by forming the church. And we're going to talk about, again, how the church really is God's remedy uh, for uh, this disconnection, uh, this um, corruption of relationships, uh, this what I call uh, sociologically uh, commitment phobia that we're living in. We began again uh, on Wednesday of looking at the word of God um, in Matthew 16 and 18, along with Acts chapter two and verse 44. What, what I did not do in that teaching, and I want to just add it tonight, uh, is that there's a section that I should have added, but I left out. You may recall that on Monday and Tuesday, we dealt with Genesis. We dealt with on Monday, the fact that we were made in God's image to be relational. That was clear uh, from the word of God. He formed us. Uh, the Lord said, let us make man in our image. He created them, uh, male and female. Uh, he prospered them again in the word of God. Uh, and so when God made us, he made us to be relational, not disconnected, but relational meaning of the same, sharing the same life, the same things, being a part of the same family, being related. But then in Genesis chapter two, uh, this terrible pronouncement of God, uh, not good, this aloneness of man. So again, what the Lord then says in chapter two of Genesis is that, um, Everything he had made, every animal had a mate, had something to relate to, but not Adam. So God says this, this, this aloneness uh, of Adam is not good. Look what he says, I will make him a help, or I'll make him a corollary. I will make him something that he can relate to like himself. What did God then do? Again, we don't understand it totally. Uh, it's beyond our comprehension. But the Bible says in, in, in um, graphic anthropomorphic language, language that human beings can, can, can understand, that he caused Adam to have a deep sleep. He reached into Adam's side, notice, Adam's side or his rib. And from that, he took something out and made a woman. I, I say theologically that Eve was made the same time Adam was, but Eve was inside of Adam. Notice something very important about relational health, wellness, and wholeness. If you're so close, you can't see the thing or the person, then you can never really appreciate it. So to be related, you have to be apart from, but connected. So even though Eve was in him, he was not the mate that Adam could relate to. So what did God have to do? He reached into Adam, took out what he needed, what he always needed. Look at this was always in him, and then stood that woman before Adam. Look, look, you can, you can tell the wonder of it by Adam's response. Adam goes, wow, this is now bone of my bone. This is just like me. This is flesh of my flesh. I can relate to this because she was taken, I would call her woman because she was what? Taken out of me. She is just like me. I can relate to her. Now Adam and Eve can relate to one another because they are not so much disconnected, but they are apart, but willing to connect and share. And each of them realizing the other one, that the other person was made just like them. They could relate. Notice what the Bible says in the end of chapter two. They were both naked and unashamed. They saw each other totally and they were not ashamed of what they saw. They didn't cover. They didn't hide. They didn't pretend. They were transparent with each other. It shows 
shows us the power again of a proper relationship. So this not good, this aloneness of man is God's pronouncement to all of us. It is not good that we are alone or disconnected. So let's fast forward to the readings from Wednesday, where the Lord said, upon this rock, I will do what? Build my church. Now, here's where the church is connected definitely theologically to Eve. Eve became the bride of Adam. What is the church? The bride of Christ. The, the Lord said, I will build my church. In, in the Greek word, you know what it is, compound Greek word, ek, out of, klesia, called out. The Greek word for church is ekklesia. It is the called out, not individual, but the called out assembly. The church is either an assembly, a community, or a congregation. It is not the called out individuals. It is the called out assembly, ecclesia. So what is God's remedy for this not good, this aloneness of man? Well, Eve to Adam, that he can relate to, and in the New Testament, the church, the church that God called out of darkness in his marvelous light now becomes the environment, the atmosphere, the structure where we can now begin to walk in relational health, wellness, and wholeness. And apart from it, we can't. That's why I love the church. I say often the church, the local church, and I mean the local church, the local church, the community of believers, the covenanted community of believers saved my life, that the local church now becomes the place we can find proper relationship in health, in wellness, in joy, and in wholeness, in completion. Because the Bible there says that we do that. Again, I said it on, on uh, Tuesday's teaching. It's, it's not my quote, someone else's. Somebody said, in America and in this world, and even in the church, we live in an ever-increasing atmosphere of commitment or community phobia. We tend to shy away from a commitment to a group. We tend to want to be individualistic. We think that being tied to a group might stun our growth, uh, slow our role, uh, impact us in some negative way. Somebody said, I'd rather be by myself. But that's not God's intention. It is not God's intention that we're going to enjoy the prosperity, the maturity, the richness of life that we need alone, disconnected. We must learn not only to be in relationship, but to look forward to it in an appropriate manner. Again, look at it in society. If you look at statistics uh, in the last generation or so, Look at how long people stay on jobs now. An average uh, for millennials, uh, Gen uh, Zers and others, maybe two to three years, almost no, no commitment. Now, on the, on the other hand, jobs don't commit to individuals anymore. When I was growing up, you, know, you got a good job, a federal job, uh, a job with a established corporation like Ford or something like that. They committed to you as an employee and they nurtured your life, and you were in connection or commitment together. People sit on jobs for 20, 30, and 40 years. They develop retirement uh, annuities from their job, and their job valued them, and they valued the job. That's almost non-existent now. People are, are somewhere for a minute, then they're gone. Almost no loyalty, no allegiance. And, and so I think if we look at society, we can see what God has said. That because of sin, because of our shame and who we are, uh, we tend not to relate. One of the most tragic uh, manifestations of that is families are rarely connected. Families don't relate. You don't see family reunions. Families don't share again and coming together often and enjoying each other. Certainly in the body of Christ, that should not be the case. We should learn the value of relational health, wellness, and wholeness in the local, yeah, the local body of Christ. I want you to become connected with the local body of Christ. And whoever listen to this teaching, ask yourself, do you love your local church? 
let me ask you it, it, that this way. Do you feel the local church for you is a necessity? Or is this something that you may enjoy? Is the local church essential to your long-term health and wellness? I believe it is. I believe that God intended that to be the case. So again, we also added uh, in Acts chapter uh, 2, verse 44, they were so closely related that nobody said what they owned was theirs. They had all things in common. I'm not asking us to be communists, but we don't share together in community in relationship, in communion, we're not going to be able to achieve the levels of richness and growth that God intended. Then on today's teaching, and I hope that you will embrace this, I won't go into a lot of detail, but I looked at Ephesians 4 and 16, where the Bible says about the dynamics of the local church, it says these words, fitly, appropriately joined, or joined together and connected or compacted. Those are dynamic Greek phrases to connote the nature, uh, the manifestation of the local church, fitly, appropriately, in the right place, joined, connected together, tightly, intimately related by that which what? Every joint supply it, which means every person, it's critically important in the local church. Everyone is gifted. And we must find a way to identify each of us, connect together, work together, share together, and find out that what your gift is will flow to other members. What my gift is will flow to other members. What you and I bring to the table should not be neglected. But that's the dynamic uh, of the early church. Also added a couple passages from St. John in the first epistle of John. You know, John was called the beloved because he so manifested God's love in a rich way to the other disciples and to the church. He was the only apostle uh, who was not martyred. John says, the, the famous quote in St. John 13, by this shall all people know that you and I are God's disciples. Why? That we demonstrate love one to another. We demonstrate agape. We demonstrate, demonstrate appreciation, value. We're willing to appreciate others so much. We're willing even to sacrifice for them. That's genuine love to make sure that we will do all we can to promote in them the best that they can be, the best that God wants for them. That's what John says. John says in 1 John, but he says, the love of God, the love of God dwells in us and that that connotes that we are truly born of the Lord when we have this, this, this warm, uh, relational, connected love one to another. And then the final scripture, very powerful, so appropriate uh, in this um, transition from COVID world. Uh, in Hebrews chapter number 10, in verses 20, 40, 25. 24 says to us, says he speaks to the body of Christ. He says, consider one another to provoke one another to good works. So the Hebrew writer there is saying that you should not neglect your connection with others and you and I should intentionally do things and share things that promotes in them godliness or good works. That we should intentionally be so related and so connected that we bring out the best in each of us, provoking each other to good works. And then verse 25, man, so powerful. He says these words was as true in the day that I believe Paul wrote them as today. Not, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. I love Zoom. I love the platforms bring us together. I love um, that people can stream our services. But I will tell you, there is no substitute for us being able, as we can, coming together, sharing together. Of course, in the early church, they went house to house, breaking the bread, fellowship, and prayers. And the Lord then added to the church daily, such as to be saved. I believe that we will find a rich relationship as we come together intensely, not just to have church, but to be church, to provoke each other to good works, to see about each other to appreciate and know each other better. It is so critically important that we embrace this teaching 
on relationships. There's a reason why we shy away from one another, or we don't share the richness of who we are with each other. We can never find out who we really are, alone, disconnected. We need relational health, wellness, which is a sense of joy and wholeness, a sense of maturity of, or completion that's found by us coming together uh, as the body of Christ. Again, I encourage you to become connected. I encourage you to become committed uh, to Apostolic Faith Church if I'm your pastor in our church, your church home. Whatever has been in the past, let's put the past behind us and let's now become an actively engaging church on every level. Let every person who calls AFC their home diligently seek to be connected. If you've been hurt before, I believe you, but let not the past again dictate our future. The Lord says these words, I know the thoughts I think toward you, thoughts of peace, that word there is shalom and not of evil. Good thoughts to give you a hope for your future and expected end. That means that we must come out of these pandemics connected more than ever before and finding the joy and the richness of our local church connections and relationships. It doesn't mean we won't connect with others of other uh, churches and so forth, but we find ourselves rescued and remedied and healed in that intimate connection with one another Again, I hope that you have been blessed uh, by this teaching. I hope that you will encourage others to join you uh, in these teachings as we move forward. Again, spend some more time dealing with relational health, wellness, uh, and wholeness. Again, Sister Smith sends her love. She always asks about you, and she's involved in this too. She is not, doesn't like to be up front like I am and doing the teaching. I'm trying to get her to be involved. Hey, by the way, you can encourage her to be more involved in the teaching ministry of the church, maybe on a Sunday morning or on another day, she can share her heart. I think that'll be so relational. She's a great woman uh, of relationships uh, and you would enjoy uh, what she has to offer. So encourage her, provoke her to good works. Hey, I love you in Jesus name. I hope you'll become a part of what we're doing. Please pray for your pastor. Pray, pray one for another. It is so important to become a more prayerful church I encourage my staff and all of you to get the prayer list that we develop every week. We renew it and, and, and call those people on that list or connect with them as it's appropriate. Again, in Jesus' name. Hey, I hope you will fall in love with your local church, whoever and whatever that is, and be a part of God's development of relational health, wellness, and wholeness. I look forward to sharing more with you uh, as we go along. God bless you. Be blessed, be prospered, and be safe in Jesus' name.